Hello friends and welcome to what might be kind of a straightforward video for some of you. If you are experienced, to be honest, you can probably kind of skip this. But I have gotten enough requests to help define what a 5 support, the hard support role, is versus the 4 support, the soft support. Um, kind of new names for it relatively in terms of Dota. 5 versus 4, hard support versus soft support. It can be a little unclear. Um, so... I've gotten enough requests to try to explain that a bit, so that's what we're doing today. And again, if you're an experienced player, you probably don't need this, so I won't blame you if you don't, you don't want to watch it. But for everyone else, let's talk about this. So first thing I want to say, take this as a general guideline, because the lines between these roles have gotten blurred as time goes on. In the past, it was very clear what a 5 support versus a 4 support was. And to extend that further, it was very clear what a support was, First, what a core was. And then everyone hated playing support. It was dirt poor. It was miserable. Some of us still did it. But a lot of people hated it. Because it was just it was just like not nearly as fun as playing a carry role, to be honest, guys. Um, but as time has gone on, they've changed it so that supports get a lot more gold and experience than they used to. And so supports are closer to cores than they have been in the past. And for that matter, the hard support is getting closer to the four support. And there is still a difference. I want to say that some people say there's no difference at all. And I, I strongly disagree. But it is. It is getting a little closer than it used to be. Um, so for that reason, I don't want you to think of this as strict definitions of each role. I want you to think of this as a spectrum. And that some supports will do what a quote-unquote hard support does. And some will be further on the four support role, soft support. But oftentimes, you'll be a little bit in between. It kind of shifts during the game. It depends how it develops. Sometimes the hard support might decide, like, oh, actually, I'm going to have more impact this game. The four support, you should be poorer than me. That kind of thing. It shifts a lot. And then with the patch, it shifts what heroes can play each role. So just keep in mind, these are kind of like this general idea. But to get going into it, to start, the hard support the numbers, what used to be called position 5, and I mean still is, that number corresponds to farm priority. So how much you get to farm in a game, how much gold and experience you're going to get. 5 is the lowest number out of 1 through uh, 5, and that means that you get the least amount of gold and experience. Now you're going to get a little bit. It's Thank God, it's inevitable, right? Um, you're going to get something. It's just not a lot. Um, so... I would say in general, you can plan for about one or two major items. That is something that's probably about 2,000 gold or more. Then a cha uh, change on the game, how well it's going. Or also, like, if you just get into a really long game, you're naturally going to be able to buy a couple more items. But for a typical game, I would say you've got one to two items. So you're going to be this lower level hero with only an item or two. And you still need to have about the same level of impact as someone else who is really farmed. What that means is that your hero has to provide something without a lot of gold or experience. We're going to get a bit more into that in a little bit. But the soft support comparing that is that they're going to get a little bit more because 4 is higher than 5 in this priority list. Technically, 5 is the larger number math-wise, but, uh, you know, whatever. That means you're probably going to get about 2 to 3 items in a game, and you kind of need some of these items. So, like, Earthshaker, he's a... I'm going to use his, him as an example because he has been a very stable for support for a long time. So I think he'll be relevant even if you're seeing this video in the future. He really wants his Blink Dagger. Because what Earthshaker does is he gets a sick Echo Slam. He sees the enemy grouped up. He blinks in, echoes. It's extremely quick. No one has time to react unless you're like a crazy good. And you win a team fight off of that. What if you don't have a Blink Dagger? What if you have no items? What do you do? Do you just like walk in like guys stay right there i'm <sighs> echo slam you know they're gonna they're gonna leave they're not gonna stand there and so it's really important to have a blink but if we compare that to at least right now a hard support like warlock even if he has nothing he has boots that's literally it he can still cast fatal bonds he can still cast his ult which pierces bkb and stuns a little bit he still has impact because he can do those from far away without any kind of item Contrast that to a core like Phantom Assassin. What does Phantom Assassin contribute if she doesn't have a lot of levels or items? It's, it's like nothing. She can slow someone with a dagger. Cool. Her kit is built for damage. 
and if she doesn't get things to help her do that, she contributes very little damage. And because that's all she's built for, she does nothing else. Let's get into this a little bit more, but keep that idea in mind. With very little resources, you want to have the same impact as other heroes. People will say, like, cores have more impact, but a little debatable. Let's not get into that right now. Now, the major question I want you to ask yourself if you are playing a hard support, it is, what does my carry need? The soft support is going to be a little bit broader. What does my team need? Again, obviously, the hard support needs to consider what the team needs, and the soft support needs to consider what the carry needs. But if you had to prioritize one, at least I am going to say that the hard support is more concerned with the carry, and the soft support is more concerned with the team. And what does that mean? Well, starting to think about the game, the hard support is going to be stuck in probably the safe lane. If you're playing pubs, like 99% of your games, you are in the safe lane with your carry. You are this carry caretaker, the babysitter. This is what you do. And you take care of them. You help them have a good lane, help them secure farm because they're the hero that needs it. And when you do buy your items, your one to two items, you're buying things that kind of help your carry. It might be a medallion, a four staff, a glimmer, these utility items that you either use them to save yourself so that you can then cast spells which help your carry or you use them to protect your carry. You are very much thinking about what does the team need, but specifically this guy who I've been tasked with taking care of. Now the soft support, he's got a lot more flexibility. And I think I'm known for playing and making videos about hard support, but the fourth support was actually my favorite role for a very long time. And it kind of still is, but I'm just not as good at it now. And the reason I liked it so much was because I thought the four support had the most flexibility and freedom in the game. So imagine the game starts. All the cores need to be in their lanes because they're going to farm. And if you're not in a lane, you're losing a lot of resources. They have to be there. The five support, we just said, has to take care of the carry, which means they're going to be in the safe lane and they need to be there. If they leave way too soon, then the carry... It's going to have a miserable time, and it's going to hurt your team so much, you're probably going to lose that game. The four support, right now, it's a bit of a 2v2 meta in the side lane, so this isn't quite as applicable as it used to be, but I do believe it's still applicable a bit, but in the future, I think it'll become more flexible again. I hope so, anyways. The four support had the freedom to decide, you know what? My hard carry will win this game if they get farmed enough. And so you would go try lane In your safe lane, you would guarantee your hard carry can farm. And you would just do that. Or you could say, wow, my mid laner, really strong tempo hero. If they get a good start, they will be able to kill everyone they want in the mid game. That is going to get us a lead to win the game. I'm going to go help them out. You secure runes, you gank the mid laner a lot, you get them a good start. Oh, you know what? The enemy carry will win the game if they get too farmed. Let me just stay in the off lane a lot with my off laner and just ruin the enemy carry's life, and we'll just keep focused on this, just keep bothering this guy, forget the other lanes. The four support had this job where you have to decide what does this specific game require for my team to win, and what can I, with the most flexibility, do to help that situation? That's why I like the four support a lot. Nowadays, like I said, it's a bit more of a 2v2 meta, but it still kind of applies. You might start in the lane a little more, but eventually as things start to rotate, the hard support kind of has to say, okay, what does everyone else on the team want to do? And then I will do the job that no one else wants to do. And the four support gets to think a little bit more about themselves and decide these are the plays I want to make to help the team, to help the team win. Speaking of which, one of those jobs is warding, and I want to mention this now because everyone always says, oh, the hard support is the, uh, the warder. They have to do everything about wards. Ping them if you don't have good vision. That's not fully true, guys. We just said the hard support is stuck in the lane. That means in the early game, the soft support, the force support, is actually going to have an easier time warding because they move around the map. So don't put everything on your five support. Cores... And the four support in the early game, everyone has slots available. Get your wards because the hard support is stuck in one location. It's very difficult for them to help the hard carry 
but still find time toward the bottom rune. Like, what the heck? I like I can't move everywhere, guys. The force support can. And the carries in their lanes, they'll be able to do that as well. But then, as the game progresses and slots start to fill up, the hard support then does assume the majority of warding in most games because they, with their only one to two items, they have the slots to hold wards. And because they don't have to collect resources, they have the time to move around. However, something else I want to mention, though, is that a common mistake I see is that people, people think of warding as this individual task a hard support must dedicate a lot of time to. And that's, like, sort of true sometimes. Warding, though, should actually just be, like, this in-between task as you identify other things you need to do. So you decide, oh, I need to go go to the off lane and protect this tower. You go there, and along the way, you ward. Or you decide, oh, we are smoke ganking into the enemy jungle. You go, and along the way, you place a ward. You don't want to just go to the enemy jungle to ward and then decide, well, I'm here. What can I, what can I uh, do now? Oh, looks like I'm actually needed on the other half of the map. I guess I'll walk there. It's kind of a waste of time. So warding for both roles should be something you do along the way to your other tasks in general. Sometimes you do have to ward as your primary task. I know, it's kind of hard. Last thing I'm going to mention here, you have to enable your team as the hard support. This is your core goal. What can I do for them? And this is going to come back to our idea that I need to be useful with minimal gold or XP. And so what are some things I can contribute? Well, crowd control generally does not need any items. So when you provide stuns, silences, slows, that sort of thing, as long as you have a few levels in that ability, it's probably pretty decent. And a two-second stun in the early game is still going to be like pretty much just as impactful as a two-second stun in the late game when the carries have so much damage that they can kill the enemy in two seconds as long as they're allowed to hit. So if you provide crowd control, great. Another common thing for the hard support to provide are saves. So someone like Dazzle or Oracle, your hard carry, like we just said, they will do the carrying, they'll do the damage if they're alive and able to hit things. So crowd control, you stun the enemy, they can hit things. What if they're killed too quickly? Well, that's an issue. Hey, we save them, and now they can do the damage without worrying about dying. The other thing is that carries are weak in the lane. So if you're a lane winner, you help your carry farm. There is like a mix of these usually. You're not going to do all of these. Some people like sort of can. Um, again, it's this spectrum of uh, what you need to do in a game. And it's like hard to say like you'll do this every single game. But those are some common traits of hard supports. And we'll see that in a little bit. Soft supports can focus more about themselves. Again, let me like emphasize, you're still thinking about your team but you get to spend a bit more time thinking like, how do I make myself strong so that I can help my team? Whereas the hard support is like, okay, I, <laughs> I'm not going to think about myself. What can I do for the team? And if I get strong along the way, that would be preferable. It's just this like slight difference in mentality. Um, so the soft support will take a bit more gold for that reason. Um, because they're thinking about how do I get my item so that I can then, for example, initiate something like Earthshaker or Clockwork. You want to initiate, start the fights because it's kind of risky to initiate. Um, you're the first hero in, and that means you could be focused and killed. This is why the soft support is a great hero to do this because, you know, they have a bit of gold to make sure they can initiate. But then if they get killed, eh, you know what? I was just a support, you know? And now the cores are alive and they can finish up the fight. So I really like when the soft support can play this initiation role. It also allows them, thinking about their flexibility and laning, if they have some way to initiate, then they can be a better roamer. So someone like Earth Spirit, he has a way to start a gank in the early game, but then later he's still going to fill that role as this initiator. Now some soft supports also provide a lot of damage. This can be, in the overarching game sense, like they're going to contribute damage, um, which I like a little less. Or they can just be generally stronger heroes in the early game because they want to ruin the enemy carry's life. Four supports tend to be stronger than five supports. Um, this is a... Uh, do I want to say that? I do want to say that, but...
but it's a very general rule. And there's a lot of higher level balancing things that come into play, such as where the creeps balance in the lane and then the tower is providing buffs, blah, blah, blah. But the point is five supports tend to be a little weaker than four supports. And that's why like usually the supports um, taking on a direct fight usually favors the four support. But again, there's a lot of complexity there. So I don't know how far we want to get into that. Um, yeah, let's, let's talk about some heroes real quick. This is a feature in um, Dota Plus. And so it actually sorts by all the roles, what heroes are played um, for each role, and kind of shows you that. So first, let's look at Herald. You'll notice there's a lot of heroes here, first of all, and there's a lot of overlap between these heroes. So for example, Crystal Maiden here is also played as a soft support, hard support, soft support. AA, hard support, but also soft support. At lower ranks, there's not a clear definition between what the support roles are. And I, I don't really know how to explain that. There's not a clear definition between like what each core is either. You'll find heroes in all sorts of different places. Um, and that's kind of what I, what I want to highlight here. There's a lot of heroes that can fit both roles. The four support having more flexibility because they were a flexible hero. They then get more heroes that can do different things in there. Um, the hard support is a little smaller of a pool. But let's go ahead to the Divine and Plus bracket. You'll see a lot less heroes here. And the roles start to be a little bit more defined. And so let me uh, point it out. So here in the hard support, what do we see? We see Abaddon, someone with heals and saves, a decent laner. Dispels, protects your carry. Well, we talked about some of that. AA, his biggest contribution is his ultimate. Only needs level 6 for that. Of course he'll like other stuff, but a big part of his laning is that he's long range, pokes him down, like decent laner, and then his ult is the big thing. Like this is why you pick AA. And he doesn't really need anything to do that. Bane, strong laner. Oh. And then he's got a very strong uh, fiend's grip for later fights. Doesn't really need a lot to do that. Things he buys just helps him do that same thing. Oh, I want to ult safely. I'll get an aether lens so I can ult from further away so that I'm in a safer position. I'll get a glimmer cape so I'm invisible while I'm fiends gripping someone so that I can continue to do this. Chen, strong laner, pushes with people. Crystal Maiden, decent laner, enables her team with that aura, allows for a higher tempo pace. I don't really like Dark Willow as a five support, to be honest, but she does provide a lot of different crowd control abilities. Dazzle, a save, disruptor, strong laner, set up with his abilities. Enchantress, strong laner, Grimstroke, strong laner, Io, depends on his laning partner, can be a decent laner, enables his carry a lot. It's kind of what Io does. Jakiro, decent laner, good stuns uh, for the late game. You see a trend. We don't have to go through all of them. Let's take a look at some soft supports. Bounty Hunter, a roamer, very fast, moves around. Well, actually, he's like moderately fast. We won't say very fast. There's faster heroes. Moderately fast, can uh, poke the uh, five support can make his way to the the mid lane a little bit clockwork got a lot of damage level one got that initiation he really makes the life miserable for the enemy support and then he has the flexibility to roam dark willow has a lot of damage at level six if she gets a fast level six which is why i like her as the uh, four support a bit more scales decently with items but more importantly if she gets those fast early levels she does a crazy amount of damage with bedlam and she can just get solo kills Earth Spirit, we used him as an example. He's this initiator, strong early presence. Earth Shaker, kind of a weak laner to be honest, but Fissure is a very powerful ability which allows him to manipulate lanes and then gank very well. And then when he gets his Blink Dagger, he has this incredible team fight presence with his um, all of his stuns and his powerful ultimate. Um, so that's why you see him as a four because he needs that Blink Dagger. Grimstroke can be a five, can be a four. Um, blurs the line a little there. That's our example of, um, you know, like you can do a bit of both on some of these heroes. But he, like he does provide damage. He does enable his team. And he does kind of like getting items because he um, doubles up on all of his items when he uses his soul bind. And then it's like, oh, I bought a scythe. Now I double scythe. Um, pretty cool, you know? Hoodwink, new hero. Oh, who knows where she's going to go, right? Keeper of the Light. He's in the five. He's in the four. Flexible hero can be played to enable his team, played very greedy with his abilities. Very easy to steal farm on this hero. Um, GH, probably the best Coddle player, was a four support. Um, and he would just enable his team, stack a lot, uh, play this hero very selfishly to then buy team items to 
then push all together and win in this incredible timing push. Team, they were Team Liquid at the time. Now they're Team Nigma. They were very good at it. Pretty much won TI7. I think it was TI7, right? Yeah, TI7 off of this. Um, but you can play Coddle in a less greedy style and enable your team things with like Chakra Magic, recalling them around, protecting them, defending towers that no one else wants to be at with Illuminate. Um, you know, he's got that flexibility. Lena, very strong laner, very damage focused. Marana, strong. Yeah, I would say moderate laner, actually, kind of depends. Um, but the arrow, very strong to gank with. The alt to set up team movements. Nyx, flexible movement. Like, you see this idea? We're not going to go through all the heroes. Um, but if we just go back to this to this list, you'll see what we were talking about showed in those heroes. Where, you know, minimal gold. Let's take a look at this. Minimal gold just needs his ultimate. What about here? People who need gold, you know, needs that blink dagger. What else we got? What does my carry need? Techies, does he care what you're... No, let's not use techies. Let's not use techies. Tiny, does he really care what your carry needs? A little bit. But more than that, he is looking to roam and get kills with his uh, combo of spells. At least he used to be. He kind of got... That kind of got nerfed a little bit with his recent patch. But that's what Tiny 4 was known for and probably still will be. You, you've got a really powerful combo. You want to make life miserable for people. And then with that, you get some farm from kills. You enable your team because you're getting kills. They now have like a free lane for a little bit. Whereas someone... On the lower side, someone like um, mm, Silencer might not be the best example. Let's go with Oracle, right? Oracle's always thinking, how do I help my carry? The items I buy, they're going to help me help my carry. So like that Aether Lens, I need a larger cast range, not because like I'm trying to do damage and like initiate. It's so that I can survive by standing further back and then save my carry. Is this very different uh, mentality but sometimes the lines get a little blurred. You know, let's take um, who's on here for both. Snapfire isn't on here for both, but I think she should be. She could be a five, could be a four. So sometimes she might just be looking to contribute an ult. Sometimes she wants to be a little greedier because she's having a good game. And so even if she was in the five support role, but then you have someone like Clockwork in the four support role. Clockwork, very good roamer, very strong laning presence. Doesn't really need many items as a four support, actually, compared to others. Um, but Snapfire, as a 5 support, she could do like a poorer 5 support. But you know what? She also scales really well with items. So if she's having a really good game, she might take the 4 role, even though she started as the 5 support. I know this is getting like a, a little tough, but... Oops, wrong way. But that's the reality. Oh my goodness, guys. I have some awkward... Quick, go back to the first one. There's no typos here. Woo! Um... But that's kind of the point. It is tough to fully describe what a hard support versus soft support is because there is this like blur in between. However, I do think that there is still a difference. So people who want to just pick like Earthshaker 5, super weak in lane. Like what is he going to do in that lane as a 5 support? It sucks. But as a 4 support, it works because there's a lot of flexibility in the uh, 4 role. I know we haven't made a 4 guide, but it's because to, to like hit the point home about the 4 support flexibility, the 5 support fit a very like defined idea in my mind. And that's why I was able to make the guide that is on this channel because I was like, step one, you do this. Step two, you do this. And then you move on from there. The four support is like, all right, let's pick between all of these different step ones because this is, got, this is gonna like define how I play the game. Do I wanna like block creeps? Do I wanna like go gank? Do I wanna try lane? It's like really tough and I like don't know how to approach it, guys. Um, this is why I was a better five support than I was a four support. I think the four support just has this uh, greater flexibility. So if you're new to the game trying to pick one of the support roles, four is probably more fun. Five is probably a little easier. But to be honest, I think cores are easier to play than supports. Cores just have to hit creeps. Easy stuff. Okay, I think that's it for this video, guys. I hope that helps to uh, clear it up a bit. And if it's not, let me know. Um, because I think it is a little hard. After playing Dota for so long, it's a little hard to uh, explain some of this. Like, what does a new player not know about these? So if I didn't succeed in explaining any of that, please let me know. And we can uh, tackle it again, perhaps, you know? Um, but yeah. Bye.